What's going on guys, Kaiga here. Today we're talking about PvP tier list for the fairies. As you can see, we now have 35 SSR tier fairies in the game. Uh, there are two SR fairies that I think are fine, but at this point we have enough elemental and holy fairies to not really worry about those two holdouts. Those honorable mentions being Ethereum, who's the fire healing fairy, and Earth has uh, Sunflower, which reduces healing, which can be very powerful, especially if we talk about the PvP tier list for classes that we talked about the other day. If you haven't seen those videos where I did PvP and PvE tier list for the classes, check them out. They were the last two videos on this channel. Today I'm doing uh, this and then tomorrow I'll be doing the fairies for PvE. If you want to see the list before I talk about the breakdown, you can check my Discord. They are posted there in, in advance. So starting from the top, uh, each of these tier ranks I do holy, fire, water, earth, and wind. And in that order. So starting at the top, we have Sakura. Sakura, really, uh, it's 1A, 1B here. Uh, Sakura and Milium. Uh, they each have bonuses and negatives. So like, Sakura... Uh, does the uh, can't move, of, sorry, uh, the freezing effect on the opponent pretty much immediately does the defense down and the damage happens a lot faster. Whereas, sorry, pierce rate, whereas Milim uh, stops them from moving at a further away distance that can matter a whole lot in something like uh, Guild War or. Uh, Shrine Peak, where you just want to cluster some people, and it also does some great AoE. Then we have Hibiscus. Hibiscus went from A tier to S tier, and the reasoning being the patch, uh, the balance patch that she had, giving her her passive she should have had the entire time. Uh, she's a very powerful one to have, even if it's just on a rotation uh, to have for that passive. Then for fire, we have one, two, and three. We have uh, Winter Cherry, which is still the uh, premium fire fairy uh, to have for both PvP and PvE. We'll see that tomorrow as well. Uh, for PvP, her main thing is her passive, uh, effectively giving you a free rigidity uh, will core. Just really nice to have. Uh, then we have Anathria, who has execute damage, uh, more damage when they're lower, which is very similar to Slaughter, uh, works in tandem with Slaughter, uh, as well as gives them healing reduction. Then we have Hydra of Flames, who isn't for all builds, but for those brawler types or uh, some of those damage builds, she can do a lot for them. Moving on into water, we have uh, Blue Rose and Ikoria, uh, who are both very, very powerful. Uh, Blue Rose is very similar to Winter Cherry, where she's going to be good at PvE and PvP. We'll talk about that tomorrow as well. Uh, and then we have Ikoria, who main thing is her passive which will give you uh, immunity uh, for knock-up, knockback, and such. Which, uh, the main classes that end up using this are going to be uh, Sword, sorry, Gladiator, uh, Priest, which generally have their own thing. The main thing is you want to put it on something like Priest, who only has that immunity after you click a button. And then she allows you to have that immunity between... So you'll be on Gladiator, swap to Priest, Ikoria triggers, and then during the time that Ikoria is up, you can click uh, the Priest buff that will then give you the passive for the Priest, 
which then gives you a smooth transition of you never have a downtime where you can be uh, CC'd in that way. Uh, another good one, as we saw, the uh, Lancer could uh, make good use of this as well. Going on into Earth, Tulip, and Foxglove. Foxglove giving you uh, crit rate and damage, So, but only when you swap into him. Uh, sorry, only when you have a shield. Uh, so something like Priest, uh, any of our damage things... He really, really shines on like a Priest Lancer to give you that crit um, all, on top of the Priest buff crit to allow you to hit certain breakpoints. Uh, Tulip is very, very powerful. Uh, did a lot of testing with her. I really like her with, uh, let's say, Mechanician. Let's say uh, Berserker. Let's say uh, Gladiator even. Uh, on earth builds very very powerful going on into wind we have almond blossom very powerful then we have uh, I always mess up her name because her name seems kind of like Ikoria but it's not Ikoria I'm sorry I mess up her name all the time uh, the little girl with the doll uh, her main thing is the poison effect and that ends up doing a decent amount of damage I, that's why I really wish we would have gotten uh, the uh, the poison type class coming out at the end of the year uh, where they gave us the four choices I really wish we got the physician because it feels like uh, it would have damage like that going on to the A tier we have licorice and mistletoe licorice very very powerful one of the uh, well now at this point she's starting to fall off a little bit but still high, high damage. Uh, the actual number you see on the sheet is kind of low, but it hits multiple times. And it has AoE stun. Then Mistletoe, her big thing, is uh, her basic heals as well as she puts up the shield. And if they try to go through it, they get stunned. Uh, most people would try to, you know, use a dash to get through it. But her shield in specific says it still activates even if they dash through it. Uh, even if they are invincible during it. Uh, only fire one in the A tier is Exoria. Uh, she's going to help you burst really well. Uh, then we have Lavender, my boy. Uh, there's talk about him moving down to B tier as well. And not having any A tier water fairies with the nerf that he got. But I, I can still see him being used. Well, I do still see him being used in Guild War and Crystal Battlefield. Uh, then the only Earth A tier is Primrose. It is awesome to see a Gen 1 Fairy still pretty high up, giving you that damage reduction, a heal, uh, sorry, a shield, and uh, a stun. Uh, as far as our two wind, we have Hyakinth. And Balloon Flower, Hyakinth for the cooldown, Balloon Flower for the group up and defense down. I'm going to speed up a little bit starting from the B tier because I don't want the video to go too long. Uh, B tier, we have, um, not Lavender, what's his name? Is it Lavender? Yeah, it's Lavender. Uh, Lavender, uh, all he does is damage, but he does a massive amount of damage. So he makes it into the B tier. Uh, then we have Rimuru. Rimuru is very powerful, but primarily as a support unit uh, on your team. Uh, if you have a support player, they can strip the buffs from the enemy, uh, allowing your team to do more. Uh, Diablo and Rose are the best couple in the game. Uh, 1A, 1B for uh, B for... Uh, B tier fire flower fairies they do roughly the same thing with a few differences Diablo is more single target Rose is more AoE water we have uh, Hydrega who does uh, defense up and silence very powerful uh, Lotus we have a quicker ability uh, but 
similar effect to Hydrega. Uh, then we have uh, Carnation, which does AoE. Uh, really could be talking about going down to C tier and not having a B tier uh, Earth Fairy. Maybe you could talk about Marigold because of the slow. But uh, Carnation just does a flat amount of damage in our uh, bigger group PVPs like Guild War or Shrine Peak. You, she, her AOE will fill up the entire peak of Shrine Peak and just do massive amount of damage. Then we have Dandelion, one of the coolest fairies in the game. Uh, if you are doing something like three... Uh, three wind, one holy. Her holy uh, bonus is very powerful, but also if you do full wind echo, her wind bonus is very powerful. Down the C tier, uh, we have Gypsophilia. She can do fine in a prolonged battle, but there aren't really prolonged battles in the game. Uh, Viola, very much in the similar vein. Uh, she does great in prolonged battles. Slows, attack slows knockups but the game is just a lot faster than that right now the two earth fairies daisy and marigold uh daisy puts a taunt on them which it isn't like the uh video game taunt where they have to attack you it's if they attack someone other than you they take damage i prefer this taunt uh marigold slows uh and uh camellia uh just does damage very similar to Lavender, but does enough damage that I think she is a C tier instead of a D tier. Then we have uh, the D tier. We have two fairies that just don't do the damage in PvP, and one fairy that does a group heal that just isn't going to do it unless very, uh, very specific builds for group PvP content such as that allows fairies such as guild war let me know what you guys think down below until next time guys